Welcome back to another edition of The Crossover with Joe R. Lucas. And I am, of course, Joe R. Lucas, the host of the show. And after five seasons of The Crossover, we still come up with surprises. Today's another special show for me because even though I love talking to these fantastic players and all these intelligent coaches that the EuroLeague has to offer, I like to step outside the box and bring someone in that sees the game from a different focal point. Someone that is seldom appreciated or congratulated and often criticized and doesn't have the opportunity to raise a trophy at the end of the season or take home a title. And if you guessed that I have a referee on the show today, you're correct, but not just any referee, we have the referee. Had to get him out of retirement for this one, but please welcome to the crossover, Luigi La Monica. My man, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. You know, it's, it's, it, to me, it's always nice to like interview someone that's my age. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because always, uh, yeah, I understand that more of your uh, or guests are players, so they are they are young. Yeah, they are you, know, young. you know, we get the coaches every now and then, but I, I'm, it, it, it makes me crazy that most of the coaches are even younger than me. So that's even that even makes it feel yes. worse. <laughs> <laughs> how is uh, how's retirement going for you? Congratulations on an incredible career. And how's retirement? Thank you. Uh, okay, I retired from the from to to run up and down the court. But uh, as you know, I I'm working now with federation and right. in the referee department, and uh, there is a lot of work to do. So I'm uh, full uh, full uh, active in this uh, in this moment. We are coming back from the final eight in Torino, where mm. it was unbelievable, unbelievable uh, organization. Uh, Almost uh, sold out semi-final, and uh, and uh, the final was sold out completely. Right. Torino has uh, probably the best gym in 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 Italy, uh, one of the, the the newest one, and uh, it was very nice uh, atmosphere in the, in the arena. What well, one day if we'll ever get together, I'll tell you my story about Torino when I played in Caserta. Is a an, okay. An, a very interesting story about what happened to me during the game, but. Anyways, why not now? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, oh, it's something, because, oh, it's something private. Eh? No, 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 it's not okay. private. It's embarrassing. It's a little bit. Of, I fell okay. over the. I tried to jump in the timeout. I tried to remember the old days. They had the uh, the wooden um, advertisements. You know the yes. the, the, the really yeah. thin pieces of wood. I tried to yeah. jump over it at the timeout, and I and my foot caught the top of it, and I fell down, and the whole fans just started like laughing at me. Right. So it was like it was, you, were, it was a, you were lucky. You were lucky that you were in Turin. Can you imagine yeah. the opposite? You were in Caserta, your people? Oh, uh, yeah, but I mean, at that time, those were my people at that time, you know? Yeah, no okay. That's why cool. okay. You know, I, I have one question I, I want. I always have like one that I want to start with before I get into the actual, you know, your, your whole career and everything. And, and this is something I think that will come up throughout our discussion. I'm an ex-player. And, I, and I'm not a true fan of any team. Either, you know, some people would think that differently. I'm not a true fan. I watch the game from a different perspective. And if I'm not working the game, if I'm not actually commentating the game, it's strange, but it's really true. I say I don't, I don't enjoy watching them. I don't. It makes me nervous because I'm watching it from a ex player's perspective, or I'm watching it from a, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about everything that the people are doing wrong or right or whatever. So I don't really enjoy the match itself. Is that the same for, for a referee after you, like, when you're not actually doing a game, you're watching a game, sitting down? Are you critiquing everything that's going on? Are, is it like, oh, Lord, he made that call, wait till he sees the video tomorrow? Or do you actually enjoy uh, the, the sport? No, really. Uh, this is something uh, difficult to, to explain. But, uh, you know, we, we are working on our mistakes, mm-hmm. mainly. So we improve. We improve when we study uh, from from our mistake. I mean, from mm-hmm. personal mistake. So uh, when I became a professional referee, uh, I understood that uh, was uh, faster if I analyze also the mistakes of my colleagues. Mm-hmm. So every time I went to to the to to watch a game alive, uh, I watched the game like uh, with the referee eyes. Right. Uh, most most of the time, I I don't know what is the the result of the game. I don't know mm-hmm. what's are, what's are going on. But just I um, was focused on the on the on the referees, 
and when they make mistakes because we we as we, uh, everybody know we we make a lot of mistakes in the, the, in the game mm. uh, some are very important some are small details but for us are mistakes right. and uh, i always try to uh, analyze why they did the mistake because uh, it's uh, i found out that this is one one way to to improve ourselves i mean when we are out and uh, i always uh, be grateful to my colleagues because when they make mistakes probably they were the the the, the mind mistakes in the future games right and this is something that um, i always uh, suggest to the to the young guys i mean from now on you don't go to the to the game like uh, fans or like uh, uh, hooligans or like something yeah, right, like right. this <laughs> go there go there like a uh, uh, referee and try to uh, analyze the reason why your colleagues on the court made mistakes. For example, uh, if I, I I can, I go to the to, to watch the game behind one basket right. because this is the position. This is the position oh, the referee, where yeah. that referee that we that we know that we call uh, lead official is the the guy that is more involved in our game in Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, if you are behind him, you can see. The same thing that he is watching now. Right. So uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, just a matter of uh, uh, I will try to to um, study the mistakes from from him and try to uh, find out why he did mistakes. He was, mm -hmm. for example, out of position. He was uh, concentrating on other, on other things. Uh, his eyes were not watching the the, the right uh, the, the right place. And uh, from this, I try to, to, to avoid my and uh, to improve my, my, my job on the court. So, so basically, you don't enjoy the game as much as like a normal fan does. Uh, when, <laughs> no, when, when, when they officiate very well, yes, I enjoy it and uh, I cheer for them. <laughs> hey, you know, I, you know I, I always thought like I, I, was, I was inconsistent with referees when I played. You know, I would. You know, if, if you knew a referee or if you saw the way they were calling them, you, you know, you either like kind of suck up to them and say, oh, hey, great call, man. You know, you got me. Or, you know, other times you get upset, you know. But is there any time like I would always expect the referee to turn around and look at me like, hey, man, when you when when the teams don't call you anymore and you can't play this game anymore, why don't you put this whistle in your mouth and try to do this for a living? Because there's only there's only one ex player that I know that became a referee. He's a guy who played in Spain a while ago in NBA. His name was Leon Wood. And, but that's yeah, the only... he played. He played also in Italy. He played in Italy in also, yeah. And now, and now there is another one that okay, probably you don't know, but the name, his name is Nate Green. Okay, and yeah. He played. He played in Avellino, for example, in uh, Fortitudo, and uh, in Milan and in Venice. And when I went to the summer league uh, in, the, in, uh, in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. he was already uh, second year in G League, and now he okay. got the contract two, two years ago. He got the contract for NBA, and he was. Very good referee. Very good referee, I have to say. Yes, he is it, a very good referee. He it's, is a it's, good it's, referee. It has to be a difficult transition because we see the game differently as a player. You know, it's, it's, it's not easy. Listen, uh, this is my, my idea. I think that I, we, we have uh, now a big problem with uh, to find the new, the new referees. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Italy, we always we were focused to take very young, very young uh, kids. I right. mean, 13, 14 years old. And, uh, you know, we spent a lot of uh, efforts, a lot of money to, to keep them in the family. But, you know, mm -hmm. they are too young. And it's, um, uh, most of them, they don't know really the, 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 our, our rules because our rules are very complicated. Right. And uh, now they are changing so often that it's, it's for one guy that is, you know, it's, it's um, he makes uh, he's referee just for for fun, just to have uh, uh, some uh, pocket money to go outside in the, in the weekend. Right. It's very difficult to to uh, let them understand how important are the rules for us. And uh, but most of the rules that we have is interpretation from from a real game. I mean, mm -hmm. for, for for one player, it's very easy to understand when we talk about pivot foot. Or when we talk about verticality, or when mm -hmm. we talk about the legal guarding position, to teach these things to our referee, to the, our kids, we talk a lot of times. Yeah. Sometimes four or five years. 
with the, with the with the players, it's very easy. Yeah. And now that we have uh, most of the oh, okay, all the the, the main uh, competition, they have uh, three person officiating. So the position on the court of the referees, it's, it's very important. It's okay. fundamental. So for one uh, player or um, former player, it's very easy to understand this concept because right. they know they know perfectly probably how many I don't know how many system you have in the team now 30 35 40 the book for the uh, for this game it's like this for example right. so they have they understand immediately but position, so, pos positioning is one thing though then making calls is a whole different thing <laughs> it's... yeah yeah but it, it's it's a good start I mean if right. you are in good position you can have a, you can have a good call if, if you are in uh, in bad position hmm, it's 50 50. So it's you, black or white. It's you, right or wrong. You started this <laughs> career though at 13, which is you know unexpected from what I from what I've read. You you were playing a game. The referee didn't show up, and then all of a sudden it, yes, it was up yes. to you my to father, referee. Yes, my father. My father was one of the on the board of this team. It's uh, the, the team where I played, and they forgot to to ask for the referees to the local federation. So when I read the game, and they said, oh, but we didn't, uh, the, the referee, we didn't call the referee. And so my father came to me, gave me the whistle, say, hey, go. This is Lu now yet. Uh... Luigi, let me, let, me, let me just say something. And I hope I'm, not, I hope I'm not saying anything bad. But, you know, like if you were a good player at that time, I don't think your father would have given you the referee. Is that the, uh, the, the whistle? <laughs> <laughs> no, the story is another one, they said. Because my brother was a good player. Okay, right, so, right, 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 yeah. exactly. That's so what, that that was my question. Can... Like, why didn't your brother get the referee or get, yeah, get the whistle? Yeah. <laughs> because I was probably was weaker than him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, and the second day came the the I mean the, the responsible of the referee and he saw me and said, "What? What was? Uh, how many games you officiated?" I said, "No, no." Yesterday it was the first one. I said, "Oh, why we we start the the, the new school in?" Uh, in October, if you want to come, said okay, I will come, and then from from there is starting something uh, you know amazing for for me. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing career that you've had. But you know what you were just talking about with the young kids coming up and and how hard it is to to get these people into the family and to get them to understand. I mean, when I look at when I look at a little bit of your career that I've looked at here, you know, your official refereeing career started in 1980 with lower divisions according yes. to our stats you know, in, in in Italy. Until 1993, you didn't really get promoted to the Italian top flight. That's that's 13 years. Um, in 1990, 1997, I think was your first international um, experience. Yes. Right. Yeah. And you got your license in '96. So we're talking about 16 years between. Uh, you know, maybe you know what you wanted to do during that time because you wanted to referee and you were patient. But people aren't patient anymore. You know, we got Google. We have the internet, and you know everything. Everybody wants something tomorrow. How how yeah. does a, how does a young twenty two, twenty three, twenty four year old kid that uh, that that puts this whistle in his mouth try to is is there a faster is there a faster career path nowadays than it was in the nineteen eighties? Uh, okay, at the beginning, uh, really, I I love to to officiate. I mean, mm. uh, I was uh, full uh, concentrate in officiating. And uh, I was, as you said, I was very young. Right. And uh, for example, uh, officiating at, at the, the, the first re regional level, where the players are probably 35 years old uh, or 40 sometimes. And that's, and that, that's even worse, game, isn't it? <laughs> that's even worse. Yes, it's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. But when at the end of the game, uh, most of the game, they came to me and said, oh, congratulations, you are young, but you are very good at it. Uh, so they give me the the power to to continue, and uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I had uh, one long period. I mean, five or six years. I remember five probably, where I was in B division, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the crucial moment because the, uh, at the end, uh, especially the last two or three years, it was like a personal challenging. Right. So I said, "Why I will not uh, reach the 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 the, 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 the better the, the division? I mean, why I'm not going in A two? And it was, you know, was like a, a challenge between me and and the and the officiating. 
Right. And uh, but I have to say that uh, that five years I think were the most important for the for the for my careers, because um, for five years I have very good uh, teammate. I mean, because I was young, because mm-hmm. I still I was still young at the time. Uh, my my uh, crew chief was one uh, experienced referee always, and you know. At the end of the season, we have a ranking, and yeah. the ranking says, "Okay, we took this year five, and there was six or seven. Right. So when started the new season, I started at the top of the of the ranking. So the best game were for me and my uh, experienced referee, uh, experienced okay. colleague. Uh, how hard how hard is that? Because you, you you know, like I said, it's, it was 17 years, and and I mean, I, you know, in my mind. I'm not a quitter, and I think a lot of people who succeeded in life aren't quitters, but you do think about quitting at, at some point. Did you get to the point where you're like, man, this is just taking uh, too long for me. I need, I need something quicker. You know, I, need, I need to make this a okay. living. I understand. Uh, for in, in my case, I, I was lucky because I started very young. So I mean, mm. even lo- lose two or three years was not important. Right. But now I will try to, exp- to translate in English what was my ideas or my thoughts in that moment. I said, I am enjoying so much to officiating mm-hmm. that until the kick in my ass is not so painful, <laughs> right. I will continue. Right. And um, yes, I continue because uh, I continue because uh, I, I love to, to officiating because mm-hmm. there are so many things around the officiating. I mean, it's not only the 40 minutes of the game. For example, uh, I started uh, in uh, 78, 79, and my first time ever that I take train, it was because I have a game in uh, one city far away from uh, from my city. Right. The first time that I took one ferry boat was because officiating. I was in Venice, and the same time for the for the plane. Right. The first time because, and I I met so incredible friends and people during this uh, uh, long career that uh, for me it was so normal to go on the weekend to officiating. So right. they could do everything to me, okay? Probably even if they give me the, the chance to officiate in first division in Italy, but probably because I was so happy to make this uh, uh, job, mm. um, I could stay even in, in second or third division, no problem right. at all. When did you when did you officially start the Euroleague? And do you remember what year? Yes, it was the second year. It was two thousand and one or two. One, one, two. Yes, because okay. you know the first season was this uh, uh, to Super League and and right. uh, and mm-hmm. Euroleague, and they they choose a group of referees that uh, they they couldn't uh, officiate in the national competition. Mm. And uh, they took some 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 referees some some countries, and uh, when they when they signed the first agreement with FIBA, I immediately jumped to to early. And that was after you had the international license to to referee. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the thing that always confuses me, or, or I think about, is because obviously. Your career is a little bit longer than a basketball player's career because of the physical aspect of it, but there's a mental aspect for you guys also. And uh, you you just retired at 56. I, I read it. You know, you felt like you know the, it, it was just time to go. Things were like a little bit different. But but when is? Let's say I'm a 20 year old kid in Italy and I and I want to become a referee. I've dedicated my life to going to referee. Not too many 20 year old kids dedicate their life to anything anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, this is the this is the main problem. You are yeah, this, right. yeah, this is uh, the problem. But by what age does that person have to like be at the first level of Italy or be approaching the the Euro League or the like? What if you if you sign for Euro League, you obviously do Euro Cup games also, no? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's no. Is there an age limit where you say, okay, well, uh, you know, I can't be fighting for your league anymore because now they're not going to accept me, or the time that I'll be. Here, you understand what no, I mean? I, is, I understand. I understand what what you what you say, I and mean, it's. Uh, I don't think that this, there is a magic magic age. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, not everybody has the same uh, uh, background. Not everybody came in, coming from this. The, the same countries, 
For example, we had some uh, uh, example from uh, guys that came from uh, Lithuania, for example, mm-hmm. or from Latvia, where basketball, it's, you know, it's like a religion. Right, exactly. And uh, everybody play basketball. So mainly it's like for us football or mm-hmm. soccer. For yeah. example, no. No, so, I don't know why. I've uh, been in, in my... Europe. I've been in Europe long enough to know football. Don't <laughs> Too <worry>. many years. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, in football. So in Italy, we have people that are playing in the in the street. In my age, we right. were, we play on the street football. So we we knew right. all the all the rules. So the same for people that are, for example, from from uh, Lithuania or from Latvia or from other country where basketball it's very you know, or Serbia, for example. Mm-hmm. So these guys, they are able to arrive in, uh, in, uh, in uh, FIBA or in Euroleague at 25 years. And they right. are immediately boom. They are, they are good. Uh, we cannot say the, the, which, 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 what is, what, which is the, 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 the right age. Right. Because also it's coming from how many good basketball games you had on the, on the shoulder. When you say good game... You mean a big game, like between uh, teams with a lot of pressure on you? Or do you mean like they, they refereed also, a good game? Also, no, also, it's, it's, uh, yes, with pressure, but also basketball good game. Mm-hmm. When you can see players that are faster, right. for example. And this is the, my experience always when uh, uh, I met some uh, young guys, young guy in the, in the, for example, in the past, in the in Euro Cup, for example, uh, uh, many times we we officiate with uh, with young guy, and this guy we after one or two years in Euro Cup, if they really want to become better referee, they have the chance because Euro Cup is much better competition than most of the first division uh, right. game in in most of the European country. So when you play with when you play with a better player, you improve. When you officiate with the, the best player, right. you officiate as well. So, and you improve your career. So, it's a, com- it's a little bit complicated process. Right. But for sure, when you are national referee, first division, and you jump international referee, and then you have the chance to improve because the basketball that you are start to officiating is better than, than before. Mm-hmm. And they force you to, to improve. And also, I, we have to say that now... The, the for sure the best program for uh, uh, for teaching is for for the for the big organization so uh, they have for example we received the day after the, the clips of the game we received this is the new mm-hmm. uh, moda for the diff, uh, for the uh, offensive team this is the new moda for the defensive team now they right. start to de- to play in defense pick a role in different uh, with different things it's it's normal that if higher is the level and uh, we have uh, more possibility to improve you you you're pretty much a, a, a scout now for the referees right you're, you're pretty much like the head of the referee department and and you go around and you watch referees and you critique them and you and you, and you you know you kind of you, you have your eye on everybody like when i go if i go see a player you know, I look at certain things. You know how they warm up, their, 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 you know what they look like, their physicality. I always like to look at like players' hands, their footwork, you know things like that. Are there like are there things that you as as a ex referee now? You, are there two or three things that are important? Are, are there some referees where you look at like, oh man, you know, like I'll give you a, a player example. When I saw Luka Doncic at 15, I was like, oh man, this kid's you know the. The, the only thing that's yeah, gonna. But st- I'm so I'm sorry I'm sorry. It, even even I could do it the same for you, because <laughs> everybody knew about him because it's, of course he it, it, it was crazy at 17 he was yeah. completely. Uh, but I mean that that was the only crazy. that was the only example that I could actually come up with where where <laughs> like is is there a is there a referee where you just like you know you like wow. You know, and this guy's got everything. What are the three most important things I'm, I'm trying to say? Like, what, what do you look at? I know you talked about positioning and, and the verticality and everything else, but what are the things that you like, this guy has it or, the, or this girl has it? Because now I love the fact that we have female referees yeah. also because they're really good. Absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, the first thing that always I try to, uh, when we talk about, it's it's, Okay, now the, the job that I'm doing now, 
I need a lot of uh, uh, people that help me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we are looking for referees that are okay. In, in Italy, it's, we say allenabili. So it means people that receive the information and after mm-hmm. two weeks, they can adjust their, their officiating. I mean, okay, we are talking and say, listen, you have to, to move like this and you have to do this. Okay? And this guy, the week later, I will call the, the, the observer that is going to watch the game. Say, listen, two weeks ago, I told to Joe that he has to do this uh, movement and mm-hmm. he has to call these things because he's, uh, when he's center position, it's too high. Okay, right. and we need the, the center position close to the basket. And if this guy apply this suggestion, I think this is the one guy right. we can work on him. Okay, mm-hmm. this is the first thing. The second thing is how we um, approach the players and the coaches. You know, we have a big problem now that, uh, as you said, the young, especially the young referee, looks like that. Uh, you, under pressure, they become uh, arrogant. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because we have the whistle, we have the power. Yeah. But most of the time, you can manage the situation without uh, taking the foul or without a uh, call. We can talk with the players. We can talk with the coaches. For sure, we cannot make a, a, a political speech. But we can give them some boom, boom, bam, like this. And... Uh, when we, you see that one referee under pressure is able to talk with the players, is able to talk with the coaches, give short um, information, give short uh, answer, this is another quality. And mm-hmm. the other one, it's for sure. You have to be honest. I mean, right. honest not, doesn't, doesn't mean only honest. It means that you have to, to understand that uh, at top of the top, there is the game. And you have to give respect to the game because we have to uh, always thinking that uh, uh, the fans comes for the game they don't right. comes for uh, to watch referee calling 100 fouls or call 10 technical fouls right. this well, is that, the, the, that's, the best that's, thing is, that, the, is the game. that's some that's some fans other fans go we won't talk about places and, and, and <laughs> <laughs> so some of them go just yes, for the referees <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes, okay, but this we, is part of the part of the game, you know. The the psychological part of it has to be, I think, one of the most difficult parts. And and as you're saying, you you know, I think like if we go back to the Luka Doncic comparison, if you have a, a person that can make a bad call and come back and and be a better referee and make you know make up for his mistakes quickly, but. But man, I, there has to be like some sort of psychological thing too. If you if you made various bad calls, you know, like a a, a a a basketball player or a golfer like trying to putt, you know, like they miss a big putt in a major championship, and then all of a sudden they say they get the yips. I don't know if you know what that means, but it's like a guy who misses a couple foul shots, and and then all of a sudden he can't make the foul shots anymore. Does this happen to a referee? Yeah. Is, is is there a psychological aspect that that could break down a, a person's career? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we we have to be very you know uh, strong. I mean, because we know that it's impossible to have one game without mistakes. Right. And this is uh, part of the game, and this is also part of our long long way to to become a better referee. Right. So when we make a mistake, we have to be strong to understand that everybody can mistake, and also the referee have to, to the rights to make mistake. But mm-hmm. the problem is that, uh, for example, uh, in the last two minutes of the game, this is an uh, unwritten rule, we have to be perfect, okay? Uh, but sometimes happen that we call a stupid foul or we don't see something or, right. uh, you know, we uh, before without uh, this technology that we have now, the uh, Eastern Replay system, uh, or the um, stop lamp, for example, that helped yeah. a lot. How many times? And also, I did mistake. And I, I count the basket and then went home. I said, oh, no, it was, was, was gold. It was valid yeah. basket. Right. And then you cannot do anything just right. to suffer for this. And we have to understand that, uh, yes, we have to learn from our mistakes. And uh, we have to understand why we did mistakes. Because probably we were too focused on the ball 
and uh, we didn't uh, focus on the on the clock or right. we did it uh, we were you know we were not ready to receive the sound of the of the buzzer and we received the buzzer and we were shocked about this right and uh, we were not ready okay now we did instant replay it's not this is problem the problem we cancel this problem we solve the, this uh, situation but for yeah, example but, but, for the foul how many but, times we have and you know you know we, we with our position the court it's it's it, you know two meters from one side on the other side make di completely different the, the angle and the make angle, completely yeah. different the view that we have and uh, how many times we we are sure 100% that we call the foul and then when the day after when we watch the game because we have to do it and you see and the camera is on the other angle i said oh no he didn't touch right. him at all <laughs> but because you know sometimes happen how many times happen yeah. so we have to be all, and probably this foul was the fifth foul of the of the players yeah, and exactly. he is out and probably is the best player of the team yeah. Or like happened to me last uh, season, he was the MVP of the season, or one of the two MVP of the season. So, and then he say, "Okay, I did this, this stupid call, and I don't want to do in the same position next time. So I mm -hmm. have to find out why I did this call." What, what's what, what's and more? And I think that also from psychological point of view. What, what's more difficult when you look at the video is is there is it. Is it the call, the, the bad call that you made, or is it the one that you might have missed and you didn't make? What, what's harder to like to uh, live with? You know, I mean, okay, you, you, someone other, could get fouled going to the basket at the end of the game, and and you didn't make the call. No, I think that for a referee to make one fantasy call, it's worse. It's worse because right? in this situation, nobody can help you. Nobody can help you. For yeah. example, you miss a call one of your teammates he can help you okay yeah, if you have true. a very strong team and right. uh, we know each other and uh, can be but if you blow the whistle and it's a fantasy call hmm, nobody can help you mm -hmm. and uh, this is also something that we uh, always repeat in the in the pre-game conference with our teammates it's better to if you are not sure don't blow the Don't whistle. Blow the whistle yeah. uh, one time we were only two, one time we were only two on the court. Now we are three, right. and uh, most of the time there is one that has the, the the open angle and the right angle. So why we have I, we prefer I, this is my my uh, philosophy. Uh, we have uh, if you blow the whistle, it's fifty fifty, okay, and we are three. One of us probably has ninety percent, so I prefer that he call this this kind of uh, of contact if there is a foul. So the first thing is if you don't see, don't blow the whistle, because mm -hmm. if you don't see and you blow the whistle, it's fifty fifty. What what about? I mean, it's it's. Yeah, you know, I'm fifty seven. I'm not much of a social media guy. I, you know, I do my things on social media just because I kind of have to, but. Yeah, I ask this a lot of the players. Like, if 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 I played this game now, it'd be so difficult for me to wake up in the morning and see like the Instagram and the Twitter and and all the comments and the messages. Do you guys do you guys ignore that? Do you deal with it? Is it something that that because that could psychologically affect somebody also? Yeah, I think that this is from our generation. I also I don't have uh, Instagram, for example. Yeah. Uh, I don't have. Uh, I don't go because you no. Know, um, what I really, uh, what I really need, that uh, I really need something that it's uh, it's honest, like we are honest. Right. Because if you are fans, probably most of the time you are not honest, and most of the time, even when you when they see the the the, the video, they don't have the. I have to say, uh, they are not. Uh, uh, they don't. They don't accept this, mm. and it's very easy to write uh, on the on the on the on the phone. It's very easy now. Uh, usually, I don't have any 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 contact with. The, and also, I suggest to the young guy to don't go through things because. Yeah. Uh, 
sometimes can be very 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 hard to 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 read some comments you know you know what's what's interesting to me is as as an ex player and, and and when i played and now i i look at things so much differently you know from a more open viewpoint the other day i'll give you an example and i don't know if you saw this or not the final of the um I th I think it was the the championship game or no there's the semifinal game between two teams in Spain I think it was uh, uh, Tenerife and Barcelona and they were playing in Barcelona Barcelona was down by one yeah. with three seconds left the guy goes to the basket wide open another guy comes out of nowhere and blocks his shot on the buzzer one of the most amazing end of the game plays I've ever seen that didn't score a basket. And you know the referees didn't call a foul, and nobody talks about it. That's the thing that that gets to yeah. you. You know, nobody yeah. nobody yeah. talks about the fact that even when they went back and watched the replay, they, they didn't watch the replay to, to to determine or not. This the TV was showing the replay. It was a beautiful block, but nobody was sitting there saying, "Okay, great job, referees, for not calling that foul." Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if it was a call? Yeah, and it was wrong. Can you and, imagine? And, and, and they make two free but, throws. But and this it, is. Yeah, and but Joe, this is our our life. I, yeah. I remember in one uh, Eurobasket uh, in uh, Lithuania, uh, you know, uh, the game was the quarterfinal was Lithuania against uh, Firum. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you imagine in uh, in uh, in uh, we we played that game in Vilnius if I remember well, and uh, it was. I think one one point for Firo, it was five seconds so at the end of the game. The most important decision of the game was made by Fernando Roca, that mm -hmm. at that time was very young referee, very right. young referee, and he didn't he didn't blow he didn't blow anything on one situation very close of this. And it was Yasikevichus, I think, or uh, Kaukenas, one two mm -hmm. of them. And it was a block. And uh, as you said, nobody say anything about this. Yeah. No one. But it was the best decision of the entire uh, championship. Right. Uh, this is our life. We know. We know. We are, we are there for this reason. Because uh, we want uh, that the basketball at the end will win the game. This is the most yeah. important thing for, for, the, for the crew. What kind of pre preparation do you have to have for a certain game? Because you don't have time to prepare either. Some, yeah, sometimes not. Because sometimes we have uh, one game Tuesday and one game Thursday, and then we have a long trip uh, on the on the middle. Right. So, <clears throat> what usually we, we 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 do is for sure we have to to practice. I mean, because uh, even now we are running differently. I mean, like with the three three person officiating, but uh, we are uh, we. I think that the referee has to be uh, athletes anyway, mm -hmm. because uh, especially for when you you are not able to to practice because the games because the, the the trips you have to be you have to be prepared before. I mean, when we start the the, the, the season in October, I mean you have to start in uh, August if right. you are young, or in July if you are fifty, or if you are fifty five in June. So mm -hmm. oh, and and. To put uh, you know the the, the gasoline in, in the body, yeah. Uh, because we'll arrive the moment that we have you have no time to go to go to the practice because there are games you are tired, and you know if you continue to practice when you are tired, injury are behind the door. We say um, what we do it's uh, for sure we have to also uh, study the teams. I mean we have mm -hmm. to check. Uh, we have to know if there are uh, left-hand players, if they, they, how they they love to play. If they play run and gun, if they have uh, tall guys, if they uh, they play our defense. So we have to know everything. See that that, that, ama uh, so that amazes to... me. That that amazes me we, that you guys are actually scout the the teams and the players. We, also, we, just we scout the teams. Yes, we scout the teams. We scout the teams, and uh, we have to uh, we have to know. If they are very good on three points, if they are a strong defense, if they prefer to give the ball uh, in post play, yeah. uh, there, there are some uh, some teams in in uh, in Euro League that they have three centers, right. and other teams they don't have anything, so they play different basketball, and we have to understand this I because uh, we cannot go to 
we cannot go to the game without uh, without uh, uh, be ready and, and prepare for for sure most of the time we prepare the game in one way and then it's completely different but mm-hmm. at least to to know what's what what is the style of the team uh, mm-hmm. what they what they uh, prefer which kind of for example uh, defense they suffer so they probably they will play the, the opponents will play on them so we have to uh, to do this we have to to watch the game like uh, like the assistant coach uh, yeah, exactly. Make the, the the same job for the for the head coach, and then transfer to the players. This is right. this is something that we have to do it. So, do you have like when when uh, uh, you get your schedule for the week or for the month or whatever, and and, and you go into let's say uh, Olympiacos and and Monaco, and you're going to be doing it in Greece. And yeah, you know who you're refereeing with. Are you in touch with those people before you go there, or or you just meet there? Immediate, and kind of... Immediately, yeah. no, 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 immediately, really, immediately, and we fix immediately our travel plan mm-hmm. in such a way we try to arrive on the same moment. To, we have dinner together, and we 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 decide the the time of the the meeting. That usually it's uh, uh, the, the game day in the morning after breakfast. Uh, when I was crew chief, I always uh, split the, the, the competence. One guy has the home team, the other, wise, the other guy has the ogres, have the, the uh, away team. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the, the general aspect, I will cover the general aspect like a crew chief. But uh, we want to, to, to prepare the game and we want to arrive ready for the game in the, in the evening. This is uh, something that we have, uh, yeah, we have to do. And yeah, this I, is something that everybody... Everybody I, does like this. It's like you. You you going to make the, uh, the 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 shot in the morning, and we talk about the teams right. in, the, in the morning as well, as well. You know, the, to this me is as, uh, to me as an ex-player. It just it, it, it's so interesting to listen to it. I hope that the people that are that, that are listening to the show can, can realize how much work is actually put in. Because there's so much work that you're just explaining to me that you guys put in. Because remember, as we said prior to this, there's three games in one week. So you have to be, you're, you're preparing yourself a couple of weeks ahead of time, also talking to everybody else, getting together and doing it. And, and is, yes. is it usually the crew chief that does that? Or, or is usually it? Usually, yes. No, usually, yes. Usually, yes. And, you know, for example, the crew chief is covering if there is the injured list from, uh, from the teams, if they sign a new player, if they release the, the one, one player. So we have to be you know, ready for for every circumstances, because uh, and and then also we we work in one very competitive uh, world and uh, you know the uh, European coaches they can fix something new every week, right? Every week. So we have to check the, the game. Sometimes we check also the game two two games before, if we have if we have time. So it's. Uh, uh, it, this is professional work, and uh, we we have to to work like professional. Go back to the schedule thing again. What's what's the feeling? And this is gonna, this is going to kind of like open up a, a big can of worms, possibly. But what's the feeling when you? I'm just going to give a couple of examples. Uh, when you get your schedule, and you see Madrid, Barcelona, Clasico, on February 13th. And you're like, oh god, or, or Olympiacos, Panathinaikos. <laughs> Are you, are you happy about that? Or <laughs> the same week? In the same week? Ah, well, let's no, say like you know, no, in the same no. week, no. No, in the but... same week, no, 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 no. For sure, to have these games, it's you know, it's uh, the adrenaline. It's uh, growing up every day. So when arrive the day of the game, you are very, uh, for sure, concentrated. But uh, I have to say something that when you have this this uh, kind of nomination. Uh, it's very easy to to jump in the game to to go to the game because you know the fans are pushing you the atmosphere pushing you so it's yeah. very easy to be concentrated very do, easy but for you, sure it's uh, when you when we receive this nomination it's you know for everybody it's a big honor do do you get nervous is is there that yes, like that, that nervous energy the before games? Like in the, your last game, I believe was the final was the championship game, no? In in Belgrade. 
Yes. Last season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but you. That one was a little bit different. That's was special. A little yeah. Bit so, different. Of course, yeah. because you you knew it was your last game, but but the, does that nervous energy? I mean, I mean, referee has to be nervous when he goes out to do a game. You know, it's. I mean, I, everybody said like. Players, do you guys get nervous? Like, yeah, if, if you're not nervous, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, I was no, always um, nervous yeah. before a big game. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that if you are not nervous, it's time to go. Because uh, it means that something was uh, broken in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, inside us. Uh, what really... Uh, uh, you, you talk about the, the, the last game that I was nervous as the, the first final four that I had yeah so you know uh, because I wanted I really wanted to officiate very well the last game I mean I was so so afraid to make one mistake in my last game <laughs> and uh, I said no I don't I don't want to I don't want to leave this I don't want to leave it this way because then, uh, cause then, but, then, uh, then you think that, then you think you might have to come back next year to do one more full season because of one bad call. <laughs> yes. Where, yeah. where, where's the, where's uh, the place? But, where's Luigi? Where's the place you don't want to go? No, no, there is no place where I don't want to go. I, uh, there are places where uh, I prefer to go to officiate. Uh, one was is Tel Aviv. I mean, Tel Aviv is something uh, amazing because the, the, all this yell of uh, fans. This is the atmosphere is great. Uh, another the, one is uh, Kaunas now because mm -hmm. it's uh, the, the gym. It's uh, as I told you before, basketball there is a religion. Uh, and the other one it's uh, it's Pioneer. I mean, Pioneer was for us was very dangerous, right? But. Uh, it's uh, so so adrenaline uh, court that uh, it's it's impossible to describe. It's impossible to describe. What what yearly game do you remember the most? Uh, other than I'm sure your final one last year. Uh, okay, it's uh, the final in, in Athens, 2007, Panathinaikos Ceska, and. Uh, and the final in uh, in uh, Istanbul. That was the uh, princesses. Ceska, uh, Ceska, Olympia. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. You you refereed it was that game. Crazy. So Luigi, like during a game, is always a thing I've I've always thought in my mind. Do the referees know? Do they know the score of the game? Do they know the situation of the game, or is it something that like you say, okay, I'm only focused on calling fouls? I'm calling you know violations or whatever. Or do you do you know the score of the game? Yes, yes, we have to know because you do. Uh, there are some <laughs> situ Yeah, we have to. We have to, especially at the end of the game, because for example, if uh, the defensive team is leading for by three points, mm -hmm. and for sure they will try to make foul because they don't want to receive the uh, uh, three point shot, uh, and we have to be ready. We have to be ready and we have to be focused because we want to call the first foul. We don't want to call the, 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 the second one that probably, probably would be also a sportsmanlike foul. Or if they want to stop the clock, we want to stop the clock when they make foul and not the second right. one. Because probably it's one second or 1.5 seconds later and we don't want to give any advantage to, any, advantage to anyone. So we have to know. So in that situation, we knew exactly what was the, the score. First of all, I want to say that, that as, a, as an ex-player, again, that amazes me because, because I've, never really, I've never really analyzed it to that, to that point. Like, you, like maybe the three of you get together and talk during the timeout and you say, look, they're up three. Um, they're probably going to foul. Um, let's make sure we make the right call so there's not an not a, not a unsportsmanlike foul, which is, to me is amazing that that... I don't know if the people no, are listening. We, yeah. feel, I don't know no, if the we, people we, listening feel the same way I am, <laughs> but but I think that's awesome. But but there are times where that first that, that first intention to make the foul, there's not contact, or or yeah. or whatever. So I mean, you also have to be able to to make sure that the foul is called. 
in, in the right manner. Yes, we have, absolutely, we have to be able to make the judgment because many times, for sure, the other team, the, 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 uh, the opponent's team, they want to avoid to take a foul. They want to go to the three points. Right. Uh, or so we, 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 we in the, especially in the last two minutes, every time out, it's uh, uh, full of information that we have to receive from our teammates and to give to, to our teammates. Uh, for example, about the score, about uh, uh, which kind of uh, inbound they will make. If they will make a long pass, or if uh, if they will make a long pass, we will make this. If they right. don't make this, we will squeeze the triangle and we stay with the ball because we want to follow the ball. We don't need to have, for example, three referees or one referee it's, uh, on the baseline where is the inbound and the other referee is on the other uh, end line. Mm -hmm. Because probably nobody will be in the restricted area. All the players will be in the in the one half of the court. And so we want to squeeze the triangle. And if there is a long pass, we have to run. So we have all these kind of uh, uh, conversations during the timeout. And we have to and, and we have to be focused and we have to understand. We have to know if, for example, from, from the team arrive from the bench one player that is only one foul, is the guy right. that will make the foul. This is clear, no? So we have to understand, to, to really to uh, analyze a lot of, uh, of details during the, the last two minutes. Man, I'm, 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 I'm literally fascinated by this conversation we're having. You know, it's a conversation I've never had with other referees, and, and I'm so glad that we're doing this, because now, you know, what you've, what you've done by just explaining that part of the game You've, you've made me realize how important it really is to have some, some experience in the game of basketball. And, and it, you know, yeah. if, you, if you've never really been part of it and played it, then you don't understand those situations at the end of the game, you know, when it's a three-point lead and this guy has to do this or this guy has to do that. So it, it's all like comes back around. I think that's, that's fascinating as, as far as being able to listen. And, and I'm glad I don't play anymore because I would hate to respect you guys even more than I do now. Because when I played, I didn't respect you guys that much, obviously, like most players. <laughs> because it was not refereeing. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And, and, and you know, I, I, think that if, no. I think that if players could sit down and listen to that, you know, and, and understand exactly what you, have, what you guys do, it, it, may be, it, it may be a little bit different, let's say, the, the reaction of players. And, 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 and coaches, but you know when you're in the heat of when you're heat of the moment that you're you're not concerned about how long the crew chief talked to the referees before the game or or with a minute left. You know it doesn't totally, matter. To totally you. agree with no, 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 totally agree with you. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, but I think that also we have to a little bit we change we have to change a little bit our uh, you know our philosophy. We have to to, to talk with the, with the with the with the players with the coaches. With right. the journalists, for example, because most of the things that we are doing, it's uh, nobody knows. Right, nobody exactly. knows. Nobody knows about what we are doing during the game, what we are talking about during the game. Most of the people thinking that we are talking, we are selecting the the restaurants for uh, for uh, <laughs> the, after the game. Yeah. <laughs> some some, <laughs> some of my friends they told me, but what are you talking uh, so so long with the you are talking about uh, the, the restaurants? No, 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 we are talking about the game. <laughs> ah, okay. So no, it's, uh, I think that we sh we should do more more information about this. You you already told us that the restaurants were already determined the week before you even well, you know when you got the schedule you already knew where you're going out to eat that night. <laughs> <laughs> this is also this is also a duty of the uh, the crew chief, uh, you know, of the experienced referees. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, you 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 mentioned that I didn't get into it too much because I think it was an obvious question. You mentioned um, how much the game changed with three referees. It became not easier to referee because I think there was an adjustment period when it went from two to three referees for you guys. It had to be. Because now people are covering less court, but they have more responsibility. But what about the uh, technology now between the the you know coaches' challenges, the the you know the, the out of bounds calls, the, the the instant replay? Is it is it easier? Is it more pressure? Because because you could really you could really make a you could really make a big mistake, and it's more magnified than it ever has been before. 
Okay, for sure, the, the, the technology helped us a lot. Can you imagine uh, the, the decision in the last shot of the game? Yeah. So we have... We are very, I mean, we are relaxed because we know that at the end we can go there and uh, we can get all the information that we need to, to take the right decision. So right. we can stay more focused on the game. I mean, for example, if there is a three-point shot, we can stay with the shooter until he touch the floor again. Before, right. we have to watch a lot of uh, the details. So for sure, the, the, the technology help. help our job a lot but uh, also now we have to uh, understand that uh, this is uh, something that can help the referees but they cannot uh, change uh, right. i mean we, we cannot we cannot uh, have a basketball uh, game only with the eastern replay we can't yeah we have situation with this uh, eastern replay we have a, a lot of situation okay but we cannot add more and more because then the, the games will become uh, you know not interesting for the people the people they right. they want to have the right decision but uh, they don't want to stop the game especially yeah. in europe in europe they want to to see the the, the 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 player play the game they don't want to see the referee that are always in front of the monitors to check their calls right and uh, we know we know about this and we know that uh, when we go to the Eastern replay, we have to be as fast as possible. But mm -hmm. from the other side, we want to be faster, but we want also to be right. So yeah. we have to find the, the, the balance. But for sure, this is, was a big uh, improvement for, for officiating. One of, my, one of my questions that I've thought of from the beginning of this would be, Mistakes, the mistakes that you've made over over time. I mean, as a player, as an ex-player, you always, I always tell everybody. I only, I remember the bad games much more than I remember the good games. I remember the the games we lost much more than the games we won. And uh, is there any game in particular, or any or any call you made in a game where you go back and you're like, oh my god, it's still like I, I. Sometimes I close my eyes at night and and I still remember that game or that moment. <coughs> uh... Yeah, it's happened and, last year. I, I told you before, it's happened uh, last year. Really? And uh, yeah, I called the, the fifth foul on Larkin in uh, FS uh, in uh, Anadolu, Barcelona. Right. And uh, I was sure about this call because the, I was okay for my position. I was sure. I have to say. Right. right. And uh, from his reaction, I understood that hmm, probably something is wrong. And then when I went to the to the locker room, and uh, okay, the the referee coach was Richard, and Richard was exactly behind me, okay. and he didn't say anything about this. And uh, when uh, Richard, because Richard, uh, he didn't know about my retirement in Belgrade, right. he learned after the game. Yeah. Okay, I didn't say anything to him. And he, just, he told me, Luigi, when did you decide? When did you decide? Say, uh, I decided in, in March, but it was a long process because, especially this season with the, you know, with the with the COVID, with some games that were not played with COVID right. at that moment, and then was postponed. And because the nomination, I couldn't officiate, for example, uh, Monaco because I had game before Monaco, so it was a long story. Uh, and then in the war, I in, in that in that set of nomination, I had four games with the Russian team. So practically for four weeks, I didn't officiate. Right. And before, right before, I had this game, and uh, I said, I start to think about it and said, hmm, probably because then I saw the I saw the game and I saw that it was completely. I can say. Goal? Yes, I can say. <laughs> of course, it you was can say it. absolutely, uh, absolutely disaster. I start to say probably it's the moment it's arrived because it was so obvious it was not foul. Yeah. Okay, and then when I start when uh, when uh, after the the, the, the game in uh, in uh, Belgrade, I talk with Richard and they said, uh, Richard, you remember I was you were in, in the game in my game in in uh, in, uh, in Istanbul. 
And after that call, I, something was inside me was broken. Okay, and I should probably I start to lose something. And he told me, Luigi, I have to be honest with you. Uh, I was behind you. And when you make the call, I didn't say anything because, okay, could be. And then when I saw the replay, I said, what is this? Yeah. And from that moment, I also start to think about this. And every game that you had after, after the game, I called the referee coach. And uh, I always ask it, how was Luigi? He had the fantasy call. And everybody said, no. So I said, he said, can happen. Yeah, you, I understand it can happen, but not in that way. Yeah. That why that way was that game was. Uh, yes, I as you said, I the night I couldn't sleep because I said how was possible? Because yeah. always the same thing. If you don't see, don't blow the whistle. If you don't see, don't blow the whistle. But I saw something. I saw something, right. and this is something that was working in my brain. In, and uh, in in those mom in those moments, Luigi, there's another question that I've always had, and, and I've always thought about it. Is uh, there's a lot of talk in this world about like, in this game about compensating for calls? I made a bad call here, so I have to make a bad call the other way, or 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 is, is sometimes that's the pressure of the fans, sometimes it's the pressure of a coach or a player yelling at you, but it, it does happen, doesn't it? Be honest. It, 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 no, no, I'm honest, okay? And uh, the compensation is when the same referee makes the same call. I mean, call from one side and call to the other side. Okay. No, because there were two mistakes. There were two mistakes. And uh, this is, uh, I, I can understand it is difficult to understand, but uh, I I was not involved in this, in this in the other follow from uh, Mirotic. I think it was also the a questionable call, okay? But um, no, I really, I was sure that uh, uh, something was happening in that uh, situation with Larkin and the uh, courage. And uh, I, I brought the whistle and they did a mistake. Right. What, what about uh, the incident in, in, in Panatamecos, I think it was, with the with the attack on the car or whatever after the game. The, I mean, are there moments like this, and, and I, I know we don't want to publicize that too much, but everybody knows that it happened and it's already out there. Are there moments like this where, I mean, did you have a heart attack at that time or were you were you ill? No, no. Uh, luckily, no, because uh, they were not able to broken immediately the glass or the window of the of the taxi. But I mean, so that's, we, a, we that's a nervous to, situation. We it's, were... We were we were able to 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 cover ourselves, so nothing happened. Um, you know, uh, uh, I have to say that you know, every everywhere you can find these these people. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes, for sure, probably were probably were fun from uh, from the game that were going home. Uh, for sure, was deliberately because right. they choose one part of the highway where there is no camera. This is oh, something really? uh, that police uh, inform us. Yes, so they were they they, they knew what what they do, but um, I don't think that they had something against us. There were a lot of uh, rumors behind uh, that were nothing concerning the game, and you know we were. If there was one team that was to complain about this, was Barcelona. Because right. we didn't call uh, at the last two minutes uh, one obvious traveling violation against Panathinaikos, and it's uh, another thing, one uh, fantasy call uh, on uh, one of the players of Barcelona. So it was right. nothing against it. But really, during the game, nobody, nobody complained. So right. we were completely, uh, you know, no, I'm not saying relaxed, but we don't, for us, it was something, you know, up and boom, 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 and then. The, the, the window explode and we were, you know, confused. What's going on? What, what's happened? Uh, because uh, the game was almost, uh, you know, flowing normally. Right. So it's happened. It, the, it, 
any moments like that or any moments in your career where you where you made that bad call, you couldn't sleep or, or whatever like you talk about? I mean, that Larkin was obviously the last one of the, the last calls you made in the EuroLeague anyways. But anything that made you just like, man, I got to get out of this or this is too much for me or I, I need to quit or, or I just I want to move on. I mean, we all know when we're getting to the end of our career, but we all we all want to fight it also because – because if you enjoy what you're doing, I think, I think what you said earlier I wanted to bring up too about that is I feel like when the passion goes away for something, that's the time, like you said, when you're not nervous anymore because there's that passion. But was there times where you, you felt like that passion was dwindling away and, and, and you, could, you were ready to step away during your career? No, I told you it's... Uh, we, we have... Every, uh, at every game we have, we have mistakes. So we... Uh, I uh, take uh, also your 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 question about the philosophy of uh, psychology of the of the referees. Uh, we know that made mistakes every game. For sure, when you have this call on on Larkin, you have to think about more, mm-hmm. more and more because it, it was a very it was a big mistake. I have to say, and it also was uh, uh, probably was affecting the, the the result of the game. Probably, right. probably. Uh, no, before I never uh, thought that one call or one bad game could make me uh, retire for, uh, mm. for 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 uh, for that. No, never. Now, 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 let me because you've you've mentioned the Larkin foul so often, and 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 you you're you're obviously still a little bit bugged by it. You know, I I, I could see that in you. You know. They they won that game, right? No, the, I don't. I don't really. I don't remember. Really, I don't remember the result. There's that, there's I don't a, think. I, I don't think that they won. No, I think that Barcelona won the game. Okay. Oh. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Really, I don't remember the result. But I don't remember the result. Does after you make a bad call? Does if the result goes the opposite way of that bad or, or or affects that bad call? Does it does it affect you that much more? It has to, right? Because I mean, you in in your mind, you've kind of cost somebody a game, or possibly cost somebody a game. There's a lot of things that happen at the end of a game. I mean, there's so many different things could go. You know, maybe the guy who comes in for Larkin in that spot hits a three pointer and wins the game. So maybe you did the team a favor. But normally, it's the other. <laughs> Normally it's the other, yes. Normally it's the other, but also, uh, you know, sometimes there are coaches that are they make on purpose something. For example, they want to shake the the, the team and uh, you right. have to uh, disqualify them, and then are able to win the game. For example, no, uh, but uh, uh, really, I don't, I don't. I think that Barcelona won the game, but. Uh, in, in my mind was uh, was that that mistake for many times and uh, for me it was no difference if they lose or win or no it it was the the exactly the the what I always uh, say say to my to my colleagues I mean if you are not sure don't blow the whistle mm-hmm. like in that situation I was not no uh, I cannot say that I was not sure I told you from my position it was you wrong saw, yeah I saw something and uh, uh, Kuric was uh, lose the balance, and I thought that uh, I thought I didn't see that Larkin uh, hit him. Okay, but I didn't have the the, the right angle, so it's uh, was was a bad call. Was bad call. Now, now you're now you're in the. This is gonna be my last question, and I'm really gonna put you on the spot because you have the Euroleague test coming up. So that's gonna be that. that then you you get to be nervous. No, I will, I will. I will. I will switch off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's over. <laughs> now, now that you're on the other side of the of the referee, and you're you're Richard Stokes now in in Italy. Uh, in Italy, yeah. Yeah, in Italy. Um, what consequences does it have for a referee to make a bad call? I mean, I mean, like I think what you said before was is probably more evident in this situation. Like, okay, one thing is somebody's made a bad call or had a bad game, but if you see repeated mistakes over and over again, um, and you're not changing those mistakes, that person's not changing them. What type of consequences does a, does a referee have? Are they fined? Are they 
Are they, are they? I mean, do they go down, down a level? Is there, you know, how does that work? Okay, okay. We don't have fine in our uh, bylaw. I mean, mm -hmm. but for uh, because uh, you know we we can say okay, this is a bad call. Decide the game. The results is uh, for example the last shot of the game, and we we miss the the foul, and it's. Uh, so we usually we we let the, the referee out one one round mm. because ah, you, it's you, you, kind, you take them out of, out a game. Yes, from one. But it, but it, isn't uh, that a, if, isn't that essentially being fined? Do you get paid per game or do you get paid like a salary? You know, you know, the, the practically practically it's a fine because uh, we right. receive money only if we we officiate. So if you officiate the if, right. if you don't officiate it, uh, you don't receive the money. So okay. it's not uh, written, but it's a kind of fine. It's not an uh, economical fine where you pay me X amount of money because you made a bad play, but if we take a game away from you or two games and and yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah it's uh, the same. But uh, okay, must be must be one uh, clear mistake right. that decide the game, because usually we we okay we have the evaluation. And you, as you said, you can go down on the ranking. Right. That means that uh, if you are continue to make the mistakes and you go down on the ranking, probably you are out from final eight of uh, Italy Cup or from playoffs or from the because you know usually for for the quarterfinals, usually we take twenty twenty two referees. Right. But then for semi finals we take uh, fourteen, and right. for the final we take uh, ten. For example, and, and so if is, your ranking is, is that based on you're, you're, is that is that based on ranking for the season or for like career? For the for the season. For, for the, the season. season. Because, so each season yes. is different. So that yeah. that means that yes. means you guys have to be on the top of your game every year. Every year, yes. We we, we have we, we have to try to find some motiv motivations. Right. So. Uh, the motivation is if you are working well, you you get you get the the, the games, and uh, so if you are working well in the during the season, you will have playoffs. Yeah. Playoff. Then if you are working well in the quarterfinals, you will get also semifinal, and if you will work good in semifinal, you are one of the ten that will officiate the, the, the final. And now in Italy, the final is best of seven, so at least we have twelve referees, but. Yeah. Marco Marco Gianzanti can can decide because he's he's making the nomination, he's his job also. Uh, he can decide to take only ten. It means that the, for the four it's games he has to take a, a, two two referees that are very good in the in the final and have more games. So this is a kind right. of uh, rewards for them. Well, how, those, so those... it's. it's those those missed games and those 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 so called they're not fines but they're missed games that that because you made a bad call or a bad whatever how many how many times did that happen to you in your career? It's happened also in the early sometimes. Every to say, uh, it's really? not, yes, yes, happening. Sometimes wow, happen. That's a, that's that's amazing. That, 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 I and never... you know sometimes and you know because. Uh, <clears throat> Such a way, the crew chief, it's uh, more responsible than the others. Right. So course. if uh, you understand, so but I think that is correct. I mean, the uh, the most important thing is that the, the 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 referees, I mean, the group of the referee, they have to know in advance that one mistake like this, it is uh, can be can be costly. Yeah. Cost yes, can be a uh, one game or two games. Man, I'm telling you, would you would you recommend? Do you have Do you have kids? My, no, I don't have kids. You don't have kids. If, I don't you, have kids. No. Or, or or nephews or whatever. I mean, would you recommend anybody for this job? Like this, like uh, we talked about referee. the twenty. You, yeah, we, we talked about twenty yeah, year old for kids. For sure, yes. For sure, yeah. yes. Because it's even even uh, if uh, it will not uh, reach the the highest point. I think that uh, officiating gave me a lot of uh, good things in my life. I mean, right. uh, I, 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 I always say that uh, uh, I'm feeling a 
much better uh, human being with uh, with officiating because I I had the chance to visiting for example some country that was probably I never uh, not even well, yeah. thinking about it for example I was in New Zealand I was in uh, China for the the Olympic Games I was in Argentina I was in Las Vegas but uh, you know I met so many people uh, so different countries so different culture. I, I mix all the, the things, and uh, I, I was curious uh, yeah. at the beginning. So uh, I, I could be sitting uh, a lot of uh, cities. Uh, I had very, very good, uh, good experience. But mm-hmm. the most thing that I met so many, many good people in in, in uh, basketball and in officiating that I think that it's uh, it's a uh, very regular uh, uh, things to do. All right, now, after all this nervousness, after all this stuff, now you got the EuroLeague test, so there's no turning off the this thing. Is the, for me, this is the worst one. I'm thinking <laughs> from one week about this question. Everybody, everybody says the same thing. That's the fun <laughs> part about it. So each question is worth ascending points. Question one is worth 10 points. Question two is worth 20 points. 330, 440, 550. All right? So oh, we go from okay. there. So they, wow. get easy, they get harder as we go. So be ready. You ready? Here we go. Question okay. number one. Um, what is the name of Maccabi Playtika Tel Aviv's arena? The, I know it is uh, two two names, but I don't remember. Minor Mits, uh, Mitachki, something like this. I don't know. I don't remember. Minor Mitachki yeah. Arena. Uh, okay. I think that I'm going a good I, way to be zero. Okay, good. Excellent. I don't know. I think I think I, I, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk to the judges to see if we give you 10 points for that one. We'll see. Okay, I think thank you. Maybe, thank yeah, you. maybe thank five you. points only. Five number, points, okay. Like, number, number two, worth 20 points. Who was the 2007 Final Four MVP? Diamantidis. There you go, 20 points, beautiful. So okay. we're, not sure if you have, we don't, we're not sure if you have 30 or 25. But to me, I'm thinking like they should have asked you who refereed the Final Four game and, and you know, maybe it'd be a little bit easier for you. Uh, was uh, Belosevic, Michana, and La Monica. And La Monica, there you go. There you go. <laughs> See, that was an easy question. All right, number three. I don't know, man. This this one I can't believe they gave you, to be honest with you, but with 30 points. Who, who has the best three-point average per game this season as of today in Spain? The best average? Three point, three point three point average per game. Three point makes. Uh, Kuric. No. No. Mark Kuric. Marcus Howard from Basconia. Ah, okay. I thought that was an unfair so, question. They should have asked you a question of Italy. So you can take this up with Pablo afterwards. Yeah, right? sure. <laughs> and if and if you if you think that one was difficult, this one gets a little bit more complicated. Number four for forty points. You're still kind of in the running, you know. You, you if you have thirty points, you have a chance for ninety more still. So you're still in the running to win this. Okay. Here's the question number four. Which five teams have won most games in a final four phase since the year two thousand? Final four phase, you mean the final four? The, the final four phase, and any game counts that you win. So if you lose the if you lose the semifinal and win the, the, the third and fourth, it counts as a victory. Okay. Uh, Five teams. Ceska. Ceska. Ceska's number one. Ceska's number one with 16. Okay. Panathinaikos. With nine. That's number two. Maccabi. Maccabi also with nine. Olympiacos. Oh man. <laughs> I I'm telling you, I would have guessed the same thing. I would have guessed the same thing. I and and the most the two most obvious ones are still there. Two and I can't obvious. and I can't give you I, I can't give you the points because you said Olympiacos. El, El, El Clasico. Barcelona and Madrid? Yeah. Wow. All okay. three, no. all, all four I, of those I, have I nine could, wins. I could say, no, I could say, but, okay, Madrid was one of the, 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 the two, but anyway, Olympiacos, I thought. So Barcelona, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I would have definitely thought, I would have definitely thought Olympiacos. All right. So it's 40 points? 
No, no, I, I, it's, I can't. Give... Three, <laughs> fifty. You can give me fifty, okay? Look at, look at that, look at the, ta the Italian coming out of you. You want to negotiate everything? <laughs> yes, always, always. <laughs> All right, number five was fifty points. Which coach was the eldest? Coach, the oldest coach to debut in all of your league history since the year 2000. The oldest coach to win, you mean? To, no, to debut, to make his debut in the Euro League. Oh, at least you have to give me the nationality because it's there are so you, many. You know what? I will because because you don't have a chance to win anyway. He's American. Think think green. Oh, Rick Pitino. There you go. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, I'm sorry. I cannot take this. Uh, I cannot take this point. It's too easy. When you told me the team, it was too easy. I know. I know. But that's because you had you had no chance of winning the the, the overall contest. So I figured I'd give you a break with that one. But but now. But I, I, I you know what? You know what? I like was... the I like the fact that you want you want like of the thirty points, you want ten for each one you named. You know, of the yeah. three teams you name, and now you're actually honest enough as an official, as a, as ex referee. Yeah, to say, sure. I, I don't, honest. I don't deserve the last fifty points. <laughs> I'm the, my goal was to don't have zero. Okay. Uh, you, you my were goal was so after, after the second one was okay. Now, now okay. Uh, hey, listen, the the thing I love about these about these interviews that I do with you guys, and of course, this is my first one with the referee is. Everything comes back full circle. And you said in the beginning of this interview that to be a good referee, you have to be honest. Yeah, it's true. For sure. I love it. It is my, my philosophy. My I philosophy. love it. Luigi, Mr. LaMonica, Mr. Referee, no, don't whatever tell me I want Mr. to call LaMonica, you. Mr. LaMonica, Luigi, please. <laughs> we have Listen, same age. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, is, this, has been, this has been extremely like, fascinating for me and eye-opening to, to, to have this conversation with you. I really appreciate, and us at Yearly, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to, to spend with us here at the crossover. And, uh, and man, I'm just, I'm, I love it. I love it. It was a great interview, and I, I, I wasn't expected, I wasn't expecting it to be so insightful. And, and I wish I would have known a lot of this when I played. Then I would have left you guys alone most of the time. <laughs> but you played also in Italy, you see? But which which uh, season? Uh, Caserta in 88, 89 with Oscar Smith. No, 87, oh. 88. Oof. We had Oscar Smith, Gentili, Esposito, Sandro Del Nielo, Pietro Generali. Um, yeah, we had, a, we had, a, we had an amazing Sergio, team. Donadoni was Donna, playing there. Donadoni Donna Donna was Donna playing Donna also. Yep, yep. Donna and Donna Donna was, was the coach, no? Uh, no, uh, Marcelletti. Franco Marcelletti. Marcelletti, okay. okay cool. Yeah. And Piero Costa yeah. was the, the GM. GM, excellent, yeah, excellent yeah. man, excellent yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, excellent. yeah. Luigi, Super. thank you so much. And, and thanks to you. Thanks to you. If you're ever in Madrid, please look me up and I'll take you out for a nice bottle of red wine. Super. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.